You're in a bookstore, roaming through the aisles, fingers barely hovering over the spines like you're playing the harp, and you're drawn to the book cover. I know, it's a cardinal sin. So you take out the book, flip it over, read the back. Or if it's a hardcover, read the inside. I think we can agree that's the old school way of finding a book. Just walk into a bookstore, pick it out, read the back. You're interested? All right, let's bring it home. So this was absolutely not the way I found this book. Hello, and welcome to the weird side of YouTube. This is Booktique Obscura. I'm your host, Jazz Madeline. Today we're going to be discussing The Brief History of the Dead by Kevin Brockmere, a book which I don't like the cover, and I wasn't allowed to read the back of the book. Yes, you heard that right. I wasn't allowed to read the back of the book. I found it online in a forum for must-read books on a stipulation that under absolutely no circumstances should I turn the book over or look at a blurb, whatever the actual synopsis of the book was, throw that right out the window. You're thinking, how is that possible? Why would you even pick up this book? So in lieu of the actual book blurb, I was given a nothing kind of summary. That was that it was a city inhabited by the dead, and one day the citizens one by one start disappearing. So naturally, I was instantly intrigued. I'm a rebel. You tell me not to do something, not to read the back of the book. I want to read it now. So that's how I found the book. <laughs> I'm going to set it down for just a moment while we discuss, while we discuss. I immediately ordered the book, forgot about it. A week later, it came in the mail. And honestly, this little lint, tiny nothing book. I forgot why I ordered it, so I threw it on my bookshelf because I was in the middle of reading a couple other novels. Forgot about it. So one night, I'm laying in bed. I can't sleep. So I grabbed this book off the shelf. I remember it's tiny, not supposed to read the back of it. Let me grab the book light and start reading. That absolutely didn't help because I ended up staying up all night and finishing the book anyway. <laughs> so when I started the novel, instantly from the first page, which is just an excerpt, I started to feel this tribal sense of anticipation, like my heart was booming. I was instantly hooked on the tone. I felt like the first chapter almost read like a short story. I felt like I was being guided through a menagerie of people. And what I mean by that is we were getting little glimpses of, they, they weren't characters yet, but they were ex people and their experiences. Each new paragraph was someone else's experience, almost like flash fiction a la Slice of Life. So with each turn of the page, I floated through a stranger's head. So far there was no plot, no clear protagonist. We were getting the story through a crowd of people. That's how I would say it. A crowd of strangers is how you got the story. From this first chapter, these first 18 pages, I felt like the city, the city of the dead, was its own character. It was full of all these moving parts. As for the actual prose of the book, it was very lyrical, beautifully written, with little dialogue. I got vibes similar to Blindness by, I think it's on my shelf, Jose. Mago. It, won a, it won a Nobel Prize way back when, and they actually made a movie out of it. But very, very similar in tone. And also, The Little Prince, definitely, that, that children's book definitely reminded me of Little Prince. Because I didn't read the back of the book, I really enjoyed this discovery process, this reading into the dark. I didn't know where the book, where the book could possibly go. I liked, I liked just floating along with these strangers with a no. I like that there wasn't a protagonist. And then the second chapter happened, the rest of the book happened, the tone shifts. I was really digging this idea of the of this city, this afterlife, where after you die, there's a whole nother whole nother world for you. The city changes shape, it borrows architectural styles from all over the world. It's boundless. There's no, there's no end to the city. And I thought that, that concept was so interesting. This book came out in 2006, before, obviously before The Good Place, but there's a similar, similar idea to The Good Place. And I thought, <laughs> why not better to talk about this book when the next season is on Netflix? As I said before, it's definitely a slice of life or slice of afterlife novel. 
mixed with, I would say, like a survival story, honestly. How could it be a survival story when it's about the dead? But it's definitely, definitely survival, kind of like The Martian. And I don't want to say anything else because I think it's a book that's worth a try. I don't think it's for everyone. You like action and overly descriptive scenes and being in a now. This is not that kind of book. This is a slow burn. This is lyrical and it's worth reading. The idea is worth exploring. It's never about religion, but there is some allusion to certain passages. Really liked it. So having said all that, having read the book, I instantly wanted to know why couldn't I read the back of it? What prompted someone to tell me, don't read the back of the book, it's going to ruin the book for you? Well, finally read the back. Worst synopsis written ever. It changes the entire tone of the story. It makes the story so boring once you read the back of the book. You know what's coming. So that's all I got for you today. I feel like a slice of life story that's has a little speculative fiction uh, sprinkled onto it. Pick up this book, but don't read the back.